cool air of winter collides with the warm, moist air of spring, high above the central United States. Then, suddenly, terror. Smashing and twisting its way across the land with winds in excess of 200 miles per hour, a tornado strikes. In all of nature's fury, there is no windstorm as great or as deadly as the killer tornado. Each year they return, eclipsing the warmth of spring with the cold shadow of death. The tornadoes etch their mark, then vanish, unpredictable and unstoppable. Aided by advanced technologies, researchers and scientists probe the mysteries of the greatest of all storms, the tornado. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Below the spring clouds of the Midwest, there's a richness of life. Cities and farms bask in the warming sun. People enjoy their traditions and diversions. But always present is a particular fear. At any moment, tranquility can change to chaos, contentment to misery. This is the tornado season. And these people live in Tornado Alley. Statistics say that a city within a tornado area will be hit only once in every 250 years. Yet Oklahoma City has been struck 32 times since 1892, and Codell, Kansas, three years in a row on the exact same date. In 1974, 148 tornadoes killed 300 people and injured 6,000 more across 13 states, all in the same day. Damage totaled 600 million. Tornadoes attack the land with circular winds that topple structures and send bits of metal and wood through the air with lethal velocity. It is not unusual for steel to be pierced by a fragment of wood or victims to vanish forever. The force within a tornado is equal to all the energy in the United States running full power for five minutes. Survivors of a recent tornado in Holton, Kansas comment on their experience with the twister. Everybody respects them, I believe. I know I sure do. You just never can tell what they will do and where they will hit. I know these tornadoes here, they hit, and they bounce up, and then they come back down just like river balls. You just know where they're going to hit next. I think pretty much that they really they clear them, but yet they keep an eye on them. They, uh, if the tornado's coming, a lot of them can see it four or five miles away. 
and they will keep an eye on it instead of going to the basement where they should go. The worst disaster we had here was in the trailer, the mobile home, and uh, there was four people in it. When the tornado hit it, apparently they were not warned. Well, the trailer, it set right up yonder, and as you can see, it was carried down here, and the uh, frame sets over here, and it just looked like it picked it up and blew it up. They found a woman and a little girl approximately around a quarter of a mile from the scene. The father of the little girl, he died long in the night that same evening. To millions of people, tornadoes are a frighteningly real part of everyday life. Each year, the United States suffers damage in the millions. The value of the lives lost is, of course, incalculable. The tornado is the fiercest of all storms. Unlike the hurricane, it can unleash its fury with virtually no warning, bursting forth from the storm in an instant to ravage the earth for seconds or as long as three hours. Hoping to increase the crucial warning time the public needs to avoid tragedy, a counteroffensive is being waged by a dedicated group of men and women who are probing this mysterious and lethal phenomenon. Well, what I've prepared here is a uh, sketch of an actual thunderstorm. It's a vertical cross section, and the red arrows here indicate the major updraft within the storm, and the blue indicates the down. Men such as Dr. Ernest Agee and his associates at Purdue University hope to answer the most basic question of all. What makes a tornado behave the way it does? Utilizing a tornado simulator, they seek clues to the cause of the devastating winds that form the tornado funnel. Although there is no one answer, most scientists acknowledge that it is the interaction of warm and cold fronts that produce the thunderstorm. Just what starts the clouds violently rotating is still not fully known. It could be a function of the Earth's rotation or some internal phenomenon within the storm itself. Observing the effects of a simulated tornado on this model city provides graphic evidence of the power of the wind and its vacuum effect on buildings. National Severe Storms Laboratory in Norman, Oklahoma, lies in the heart of the nation's most active tornado area. Here, meteorologists, technicians, and students work toward eliminating the element of surprise in the tornado's attack. Okay. Okay, oh, yeah, that looks good. Doug, can we have an ASRAN on the northwest circulation, please? The still are maintained very high standards. Locked in a race against death and destruction, they utilize radar, satellites, computers, and eyewitness observations to scan the skies throughout the year in order to anticipate disaster. By analyzing and interpreting data, they attempt to provide the crucial lead time that spells the difference between early warning and tragedy. During the tornado season, the day begins with interpretation of the satellite photo by meteorologist John Weaver. He must decide on the day's tornado outlook and advise the staff. The prognosis of today's photograph is not good, and the storm track down begins. Upper uh, vertical wind structure is conducive to uh, tornado generation, winds increasing and varying with height. The maximum wind in this sounding, although it's not showing here, is 70 knots aloft. I do expect, uh, as I say, there's a very high probability of tornado formation in any storms which fire up along this warm front north of the low. 22,000 miles in space, a satellite confirms the telltale signs of a towering thunderstorm, parent to the tornado.
watch the circulation up here. It's updating now. In a darkened room, a handful of men track and predict the storm, hoping to outguess its deadly intention. Okay. Look at that. I ought to call, call the weather service back and update him and call John. Mm -hmm. We got a forecast position on there. Nerve center for the chase. They watch with mounting interest. All right. Looks like we ought to do something on that. Within minutes, the storm center issues an advisory. This just in. The National Weather Service has just issued a storm watch for the following areas of Kansas. Jackson, Cook County, Maribel County. Miles away, the skies only hint at what is to follow. With the storm's approach, citizens are warned to take cover, possibly for their lives. This area is under a tornado alert. Okay, let's go. It's already going up. Racing against time, an intercept chase team heads out to find the storm system and document the tornado's formation without becoming victims themselves. The harvest season again. Led by meteorologist Bob Davies Jones, students Kelvin Drogemeyer and Ken Carson spend their summer vacation heading straight toward danger. But adventure is not what spurs them on. It is knowing that they are part of a coordinated effort to save lives. And we got two main missions. One is to get to within close range of tornadoes and get a close-range debris movie. Uh, we hope to be able to analyze the movie for trackable debris and get tornado wind speeds from such an analysis. Our other mission is to verify tornado signatures which are seen on the Doppler radar. Okay, John, we'll take the LG exit and head west. We're scrambling the jet to cover it. observation and recording of the storm's activity is initiated using a specially equipped F-4 Phantom jet. Okay, John, we're just turning on I-35 just outside the lab. Uh, we're going to head south on Highway 76. Flying near the speed of sound, the pursuit plane penetrates the storm system. Time lapse started at 1200 CST. Setting up near the storm's edge, the chase team focuses on the most promising area for tornado formation. We'll time lapsing. We'll be time lapsing at one frame per second. Bob's camera records nuances of cloud activity hidden to the naked eye. You want this one frame per second? Yeah. I have a little trouble with the contrast. We need to get back in touch with John at the lab too pretty soon. Okay. Nestle suited control, do you copy, John? Okay, John, I copy. What kind of uh, sky cover do you have? Okay, presently, uh, we got uh, Cirrus Overcast. We uh, time lapse some rotation in the cloud base. Appear to be a funnel to our north, heading towards the northeast. Okay, Roger. I uh, just been up on the observation deck, and there's a big new set of towers building into the southwest side of that El Reno. Okay, floor. thank you. Thank you, Brad. Oh, you one, do you copy? Chief control, so you one, go ahead. John, we've got some towers that are growing uh, pretty explosively to the northwest here. Uh, we're beginning to paint an echo on the scope, and I wondered if uh, you could go up and take a look at uh, those storms. Uh, we're looking to the northwest. We have an extensive rain-free base. The towers are rapidly building. A little bit hazy and we're having difficulty trying to see some of the features, but uh, uh, we are approaching and should give, uh, give a better indication later on. Okay, Roger, stand by. John, I'm going to see what uh, Doppler has on that. Okay, Don, we got some good cyclonic shear at mid-level, 5 kilometers high. Uh, coordinates are 297 at 58 kilometers. Okay, thanks, Larry. Do you see that, Mike? Yeah, Don. John, we've got uh, some cyclonic shear, 297 degrees, 58 kilometers. And uh, if you have a new satellite picture, we'd like to see that too. All right, thank you. 
Interpreting local cloud patterns, the chase team narrows in on the storm. For the experts, there's no doubt now. A tornado is forming. As information comes in, the worst seems imminent. Okay, John, what do you see? Okay, presently, John, the uh, towers are growing very rapidly. It appears to be rotating quite dramatically. Uh, the appearance from here, John, looks like a, uh, a rotating atomic bomb. It's only about 300 meters off the ground. So we're looking at it. Two hundred miles per hour. John, it's really wrapping up. We better go to the tornado. Okay, Larry. Call Tinker. This is Don Burgess, NSSL Norman. I'd like to issue you a tornado advisory for a storm that's 300 degrees at 20 nautical miles. I would put it right over the city. Only moments separate the tornado from a town never struck before. There it is again. Oh, this is right a great vibe. We've got a log jam. Okay. Why don't you update it again, Larry? Oh, okay. wow. There it is. Oh, oh there it's it is. building. Wow. It's building. How high off the ground is that, Larry? Oh, this is right down the deck. I hope those people don't cover it. Go ahead, OU-1. Uh, Roger, John, we have debris, uh, a tornado on the ground, uh, just to our southwest. Uh, we are moving eastward very rapidly. And uh, we're going to be able to get photos of it here in a few minutes. Yeah, we're going to be able to get photos of it here in a few minutes. Yeah, we're going to be able to get photographs and movies, Norman. Uh, Don, 1715, chase right, reports the debris. Uh, chase sees the tornado, 330 degrees, 48 kilometers. We have an update on the Yeah, like just about where we got it. They say County Line Road, Northwest Highway, there's been a lot of damaged houses destroyed. some, being lucky means the storm missed them. For farmer Dean Staus, it means being alive and able to rebuild. Yeah, we lost cows and calves and sows and some pigs. And I've got, still got some sows missing and come back. And, uh, but it could have, they, they could have been a lot more killed than what it actually was for all the for all the debris, debris and, and tin, there was a lot of tin flying around. And just like here, there was 41 fat cattle ready to be shipped Thursday. And this was Friday, the next afternoon. And we found every one of them and no broken legs or anything like that. And I don't know how they got out of it. You can just see that stuff just pounded right in the ground and they got away. Dean's wife, Karen, was alone in the cellar with her infant when the tornado struck. I could hear things breaking, but I had no conception of, of the wind or anything because I was singing lullabies as I was feeding my son his food. And I didn't know the roof was off or the windows were out until I opened the door to the basement and could see the sky. And usually there's two flight of stairs going up to the attic. And they weren't there. Until now, <laughs> you know, you haven't been actually in contact. We helped, helped back in... Uh, when there was tornadoes south of here in Topeka and Meriden area, Silver Lake, when I was these boys' size. And, uh, you know, I just never was personally involved, of course. But I am now. <laughs> I guess it frustrates me so much that people are primarily concerned with the house. And the house can be rebuilt with income. But if we don't get the farm going, we don't have any income. But had it not been for advance warning, Karen Staus and her baby might have been added to this year's list of fatalities. A list that is diminishing because of the dedication and skill of the men and women of the National Severe Storms Laboratory.
It has been estimated that at any given moment, there are 1,800 thunderstorms in the atmosphere above us, each of which could produce a devastating tornado. Despite all the advances in the science of meteorology, the tornado remains perhaps the most challenging weather event of all. To date, we have no way to stop the tornado. We can only try to cope with it. Can we expect someday to be able to modify or control this unique force of nature? Dr. Edwin Kessler, director of the National Severe Storms Laboratory. But we might turn heavy rains into moderate rains over a wide area. That would be very nice for agriculture. We would reduce erosion and we would have a, re a better supply of water power, for example, a more regular supply. But uh, I'd like to emphasize that this is really very speculative at this time. And I would offer a comment that because of the really astonishing advances of the recent decades in areas of science and technology, uh, particularly in America, we've tended to look to a science and technology for the answer to many problems for which science and technology are not well suited. The best thing that we can do about the tornado is to be intelligent about it. Heed the warnings, observe the clouds, so that you guide yourself intelligently in this marvelous atmosphere that God has provided for us.